I would like to introduce the moderator for this session, uh, Sri Vivek Krishna Govind, a Verma and Verma Chartered Accountant. Uh, sir, please uh, join us for this panel discussion as a moderator. Good afternoon to all of you and a warm welcome to the session. Uh, may I invite my co-panelists on to the session, please? Uh, we have uh, Rajesh Nair, partner of EY and uh, past president of Thai Kerala. Rajesh, please. We have with us Ish Anand, the founder CEO of Rely, Rely uh, Smart Global Advisory. Please. He's also a charter member of Thai Delhi. And we have Arun Natarajan, the founder of Venture Intelligence, uh, charter member of Thai in Chennai. So the topic that we have on, uh, uh, on course for our discussion today is very, very interesting. Many of you here are investors and uh, this whole event here which has been uh, you know, conceived is largely to do with this ecosystem and investors play a very, very important part in this, uh, in this whole chain of uh, you know, activity connected to the ecosystem. Now we have three very eminent speakers here and uh, what we thought we'll do is uh, initially listen to all of them, probably six, seven minutes each of our panelists will, uh, you know, do an, a, a quick, you know, uh, discussion from their perspective. And I would also request all of you to spend maybe a couple of minutes to talk about, you know, what you do, rather than reading out, uh, you know, what we've, you know, printed out from LinkedIn. It would be better to hear it from the horse's mouth so that you can probably convey a couple of thoughts. I'm a chartered accountant by profession, partner of a firm called Verma and Verma, based in Cochin, and very much connected to the ecosystem by virtue of being very associated with various associations, including uh, Thai Kerala, where I'm a charter member. This is uh, my intro, and uh, we'll we'll just take this forward from sure. here. I don't know what you. Okay. Uh, Arun Natarajan. Uh, I run a company called Venture Intelligence. We are essentially a data shop. Uh, we serving the investing and investment banking community with data on private companies, their financials, transactions, valuations, so much so that, you know, uh, on a WhatsApp, you can query putting in a private company name and getting their entire funding history, financials history, right on WhatsApp. Obviously, when you log into our database, you have much richer information, compare companies and so on. So typically, a day of an investment banking or an investment professional starts on our daily newsletter. So we have a bunch of stuff out on the uh, public web as well, blog, LinkedIn, and so on. So I'll talk about a bit when we come to our report there. So can I kick off with more? Or yeah, no, no, you, 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 you can take okay. it forward. Aaron. Great. So just that vantage point that we have as a data lens on the venture private equity ecosystem uh, kind of gives us a perspective on this topic of you know, how startups should look at fundraising from a stage perspective, right? So um, that, you know, being said, let just quick lay, lay the land in terms of definitions, right? So what is early stage and you know, what is late stage? That's the topic for today. And to define that, you know, from a venture capital lens, uh, a company that is raising a seed round and then just for the benefit of anybody who may not know the jargon here, you know, uh, a Series A round is the first round of formal institutional capital. That just means a company like a venture capital fund versus, let's say, an angel individual, you know, who writes a check from a personal standpoint, right? So we track, you know, seed to Series A, Series B as early stage, and then Series C, Series D, or our follow on rounds, which is growth stage capital, and then Further onwards is typically land of private equity investors, which are much more advanced. So, just the benefit for somebody who may not know this basic. Um, so, having said that, in the recent past, it's no secret that funding has come down. And the word that I hate to use is this funding winter. But, you know, the fact is that, you know, uh, venture capital, if there's one thing that's known about it, it's a cyclical business. You know, we've seen 2000, we've seen 2013, you know, we've seen 2008 in between. So this goes through cycles very clearly. So how should an entrepreneur play based on the environment and based on the funding levels is something that the stage of business also lends itself, right? So 
Having said this, what is this funding winter in terms of numbers, right? So, we saw as venture capital the peak in 2021, which is $36 billion of VC money. Please remember that number because I suspect it's not going to be seen for a long time to come. And the industry agrees on that too. We saw 44 unicorn companies being minted in that year, which became 22 in 2022 and which became one Zepto this year. Again, one more number that we will see a very long time to see. You know, that's the, what the industry is reading it. Hopefully, they are proven wrong, but that's what it is. So, the winter is biting. It started with the late stage. So, typically, you know, the late stage funding dried up and when it comes to early stage, come nine months of 2022, actually, it was tracking very well to 2021 when it comes to early stage funding. So, we saw some 800 deals happen in early stage in 21. 22 was just 750, you know, so it's not too far behind. But come nine months, 23, it's down to 250 deals that we've tracked. So, there is a winter and that is biting hard. That is for real. Having said that, let me go back to the positives. One, the unicorns, you know, let me name them. Lenskart, Zepto, as we said, newly minted. Inframarket, Zetwork, they've all managed to raise between $150 million to $500 million just this year. So, there is money to be had even for the late stage companies at this point. So, as far as the overall ecosystem is concerned from a sector lens, everything is down. But substantially, enterprise technology, which means SaaS, deep technology and others, AI, ML included, has received 120 transactions just this year. Fintech follows with 60 transactions having been done. And then there is e-commerce far down from 21 levels, but definitely getting attention, typically vertical. And then you have other bunch of you know companies, whether it is yet tech, AAML and so on, right? So there is money to be had clearly for the right companies. The ecosystem is very large. So in the last two years, let me make my final two points. Last two years, $10 billion of just venture capital, India dedicated money has been raised. So this is raised by financial VCs. These are not foreign global guys like SoftBank, Tiger Global, etc. These are funds which have to be invested only in India. $10 billion non-invested lying with the funds. The likes of 314 Capital, you know, out of Bangalore, these are home, Bloom Ventures. They've all raised money between 200 million plus and they're sitting on it. So they are waiting and watching for the right opportunities. So very clearly there's money to be had. I will talk about one report that we recently put out that is available you know, for free download from our website. It's, I think the most important stage in any of the funding journeys is the Series A stage. This is when, as one of the investors put it, which separates the men from the boys, right? So only 30% of angel and seed companies graduate to series A stage, right? So these are, we have studied 3,500 angel and seed funded companies in the last seven years, of which this is the ratio, 30%. Luckily, after that, the ratio improves quite significantly. So we get series A to series B is as high as 50%, improves 60% and so on. So let me summarize by just saying that you know, the investors are taking far more time and diligence today to invest. As entrepreneurs, we need to spend our time very clearly and going after the right pockets of capital. And believe me, there are plenty of pockets of capital to be had, even in this so-called funding winter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arun. And, uh, you know, you've kept your time and uh, conveyed your thoughts with absolute clarity. Over to you, Ish. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, firstly, nice to see all of you after lunch and uh, we'll try and make it as interesting as possible. So, my name is Ish Anand, a little background about myself. Um, I'm a, I've worked through about seven different industries, but those seven industries include private equity, uh, they include the startup space, and uh, my first entrepreneurial venture, which was in the IT and IT-enabled services space, uh, I took that to about 5,000 people over a four and a half, five year period. And in 2018, we merged it with a larger organization. 
and we got it to a listing on the National Stock Exchange. So I was lucky with my first entrepreneurial venture, took it to a listing, and then got out of the business. So like most, you know, uh, entrepreneurs do. Uh, so uh, that's my background. Last 10 years, I've been very deeply involved in the real estate, in prop tech, in ed tech, in fintech, in number of other areas, so sector agnostic, um, logistics and supply chain, uh, deep tech. Uh, I've advised funds. I advise two funds currently. We're trying to raise one ourselves, uh, which is more in the impact space. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating an ecosystem based out of the Middle East. Uh, from the UAE, uh, we have our strengths that we are trying to harness in India, the Middle East, and Africa. And we're trying to build an ecosystem which caters to these three markets where startups and investors can both look at these markets. Uh, they need not necessarily be investors. A lot of you who already have up and running startups are looking at expanding outside this country, outside your own geography. And or you're looking for new technology or looking at helping other people solve problems which would once again add to your top line as well as your bottom line. So we're creating that entire system based out of the Middle East. Um, our fund uh, will be an impact fund, um, uh, very small in size, but uh, you know, we will be very selective with what we do. But we will uh, invest in this space and uh, you know, the south of the country is a pet subject for us. So, uh, you know, we love the ecosystem and we love what's happening here. So that's the second piece. And the third piece is a, is a fintech ecosystem that we are creating where we build communities of investors across the world. In my last organization, which I was India, C India and Middle East CEO for, we built an ecosystem across 65 countries. And we had investors who put in close to $1.5 billion dollars and we manage that $1.5 billion in smaller fractional investments in alternative assets, in private equity, bank notes, commodity, et cetera. So, you know, that, given that background, taking it on uh, from what we're discussing today, late stage, early stage, um, I'll just take off. I won't repeat anything that Arun mentioned, but... Okay, I, I'll have to speak louder. That's all. Um, so, uh, you know, late stage versus early stage. Um, so I'll just say a few things here. Uh, firstly, look at it on the positive side. There is enough money in the ecosystem. There are all the, all the good VCs and even the medium-sized and smaller ones uh, are all sitting on money. They are sitting on money both for late stage as well as early stage. The question is what all of you have to ask yourself who are investors or who are entrepreneurs. Um, why is that investment actually not happening? And why are people saying there is a funding winter? There is a funding winter because some of the fundamentals that you need for a good healthy business have not really happened or got embedded in businesses that started a number of years ago. I'm sure all of you have heard um, some of the financial misreporting, some of the inflated uh, valuations, etc., that have happened in the past. Those are all coming to bear right now. And what's happening is there's course correction happening. So whether it's a large company or a small company, Keep one thing in mind, if your fundamentals are right, if you built your organization and your business on the principles of unit economics, margins, your product market fit, etc. And, and that's what they teach you when you start your business. Uh, you know, they, they give you something called, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a sheet which, is, which, which gives you the matrix which you need to build for your business. Uh, if you've looked at that very, very carefully and if you built your business on solid fundamentals, I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to raise money. You need to be able to 
show that you're not just top line driven, but you're also bottom line driven. You've got good reporting systems. You've got an ability to grow and scale, not just within your geography, but outside your geography also. I think that's what investors are really looking for. Are they sitting on money? See, all the large global investors, if you look at data and you look at figures, you look at the two top guys, you look at Tiger, Tiger Global, you look at um, your SoftBank, uh, and you look at your Sequoias of the world, yeah, especially with Tiger Global and SoftBank. In the last probably 8 to 12 months, they've not done a single deal. Why? Ask yourself this question. Are there no good companies in the market? Of course there are. But those deals have not happened because of the fundamentals, because of the course correction that needs to be done in the late stage companies. For the early stage companies which are looking for money, there is once again enough money available. The actual number of you know, angel deals or pre-series A, series A deals, if you see are similar in nature to what have happened last year. They've gone down in terms of dollar terms, but in terms of number of deals that have happened, the difference isn't very great. So the deals are happening. The numbers may not be as high as last year. So all of you need to take heart and think that if I am to go out and raise money, can I raise money? Yes, you can. But an investor today is looking at doing a much deeper due diligence than he or she did six months or one year or one and a half years back. So I think that's something you need to be very careful of. The second piece you need to be very careful of is fundamentals, which I just mentioned. And the third piece is, is your business geared to solve global problems, not just local problems? If you really want to get good money, you want to look at strong fundamentals, you should be able to also solve global problems not just what you're doing locally. Don't limit yourself. And I think that's what we do with a lot of our investors. That's what we tell them. That's what we advise them. And, uh, you know, sitting in the UAE, I can tell you there's enough so-called diaspora money and there's enough NRI money available to come into India. They love the ecosystem, but they're a little unsure because of whatever they've heard in the news in the past one, one and a half years. And I think that's what all of you as either founders or investors in the local ecosystem would probably need to look at. So thank you. Over to you. Thank Rajesh. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ish. Over to you, Rajesh. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, so I'm, I'm Rajesh Nair. I work with Ernst & Young. Uh, uh, I lead the work that we do in Kerala. Um, and I have been doing this for the last uh, 13 years. Uh, in, within the EY uh, circle of things, um, besides Kerala, I also lead our uh, sustainability practice across India, largely looking at uh, growing in various states. Uh, so as I said, it's been an association of close to uh, 13 odd years in Kerala. I, I've, seen, uh, I've seen Kerala grow. I've seen uh, a lot of, you know, lot of our clients grow and us grow as well. We are more than uh, 10,000 people now in Kerala between uh, Kochi and uh, Trivandrum. Um, all of our revenue comes from entrepreneurs. So mo rather most of our revenue comes from entrepreneurs. We work with the Kerala government as well. Um, and bulk of that revenue comes from uh, the late stage uh, entrepreneurs, so to say. Uh, people who've been in and around. Now, if you look at consulting revenues and not just us, uh, a lot of large consulting people. If you look at consulting revenues, they have generally grown. And even now, when uh, there is a so-called, uh, you know, funding uh, lapse or, you know, a funding winter which is on, consulting revenues are, have not dipped. And on, on the other side, probably there is more growth happening on the consulting side. One of the things why this is happening is, I think there was a sort of ra irrational exuberance maybe five years now, five years before when we were seeing uh, large valuations, we were seeing companies not, uh, you know, uh, issues point about not cracking the fundamentals right. I was here, this is my, um, I was, I think I nearly every huddle I've been here. 
Uh, three years back, I was here. Uh, two years back, I was in here in a Heidel, and you know, I had an entrepreneur come and tell me that you know they're doing exceedingly well. So, uh, and he had brought his uh, financials, etc., and then he showed me his financials, and it was all red everywhere. And of course, he had not put it red, but if you can see the numbers, it's you know big losses everywhere. And I asked him, so how are you saying that you're doing well? You're making losses. And he said something very interesting. He said, I'm making money on my losses. So this is what the broad, I mean, just to, and I'm, I don't blame that guy. Apparently, the, the company eventually, uh, you know, pivoted and it's doing well now. But having said that, uh, if you don't focus on just the fundamentals and if you float numbers and if you say that I need a 10x valuation or a 20x valuation, perhaps three years before it was okay. Today, if you go and tell valuation, a lot of people ask you, you know, like, you know, I'm part of the Kerala Angel Network. I'm one of the founding members of the Kerala Angel Network. And we ask people, you know, so where is this valuation coming from? Has the chartered accountant looked at your numbers and verified this? So some of these ancillary services like diligence, valuation, all those things which was sort of a, you know, a back office activity or something which was not important for the founder have become more important now. So that's the reason why consulting revenues in general is doing okay because a lot of people now, even at an early stage, come to an EY or a KPMG or a Deloitte or to, uh, you know, large chartered accountants like Varma and Varma, etc. to verify their financials and make sure they're on the right path. Things like risk management, etc., was never thought of by uh, by entrepreneurs in the past. Everybody, as a startup, you're just focused on your product, but you are not really looking at uh, you know you are not looking at markets, and you are not taking that structured way of thinking. Today, a very early stage startup comes and tells us to do a market study, or to tell us something as simple as you know for those of you who've done your B schools. Something like a five forces uh, analysis or a porter's analysis or a capability analysis or a payoff matrix. Some of these standard tools that we learned and forgot in college are now being used because people want to uh, de-risk some of their assumptions of the future. And while we say that, you know, everybody wants to look at that potential future, uh, you know, profitable strategy as what we say. Today, uh, startups and companies are getting a little more aggressive in terms of clearing those basics and the fundamentals right. And that's where, uh, you know, consultants come in. Just to add, uh, my experience in Kerala has been, so this entire movement in Kerala probably started in 2013 when we had the entrepreneurship summit during the earlier Mr. Uman Chandi's government and after that, there is that uh, you know, that entire impetus to entrepreneurship has increased. I've, while I'm not an entrepreneur, I firmly believe that entrepreneurship gives you that seat at the table much before. So, you know, if you are in a standard career, you are taking senior decisions maybe 15 years into the company or 20 years into the company. As a startup, you are there right at the beginning. So it's a great opportunity. It's a great career opportunity. I have not seen very good students getting into entrepreneurship 10 years back. That's not the case now. The best students in the best colleges want to be entrepreneurs, if not immediately, at least in the near future. So those are some cultural changes that we are seeing in Kerala, and I think it's for the best. And I think the entire, you know, this atmosphere out here, it seems like an airport where, you know, different airlines are announcing their boarding times and uh, departure times this this impetus and if you you know some of the startup guys nasif was saying that they're expecting 10000 people out here uh, in, in these 3 days between yesterday today and tomorrow that's the kind of impetus uh, it is and it's i think it's a great opportunity it's a one time opportunity it's, i don't think this kind of opportunity will be there whether you're early stage late stage or you are even thinking of jumping into entrepreneurship, there is no better time. Forget about the funding winter, forget about the lack of things. Good fundamentals, good ideas will always get money. Wonderful. So that's been a 
Can we have a round of applause uh, that just to keep some energy in the room going? Yeah, it's been great. The applause is for all three of our panelists who have, uh, you know, conveyed their thoughts with uh, absolute clarity. We thought we'd do an initial comments of six, seven minutes each and they've all really encapsulated all that they wanted to say within the set time. So what we'll do is, uh, you know, one or two rounds of discussion we will have um, within the panel. Meanwhile, I would request all of you to kindly think of a few questions. Anybody has, uh, after the first round of discussion here, I will open if you have anything. We'll take that. If not, we'll go to the second round and thereafter we'll, you know, we, we can, we'll, we'll still have 10, 12 minutes for uh, Q&A. So my uh, first thought that I thought I will, uh, you know, bring to the table here is, you know, from an Indian context, you know, and uh, probably Rajesh can throw more light from a Kerala context, but I'm sure both uh, Arun and Isha have been here and you're seeing the kind of energy in Kerala as well. I'm sure you're also associated with a lot of entities in Kerala. What is the, what are the real challenges that you see the, if you were to do, Rajesh spoke about uh, uh, grad school and all of that, so to do a SWOT analysis as we would have when we were in, back in our uh, college days, so SWOT or at least from a opportunity side and the, the challenges side, it would be good to hear from all of you, uh, from an Indian context as well as from a Kerala context, so probably four minutes each for all of you, in any, in any order, yeah. Um. So in terms, of, uh, in terms of opportunities, as I said, there are across sectors, there are opportunities and it's for you to grab those opportunities. The amount of uh, partnerships which are available to you today was never available. So for those of you who attended the first session of the day today, we had the German uh, consulate, uh, the consul general, we had the Swiss consul general and the Austrian consul general. Three German speaking companies coming to Kerala where most of us don't understand German besides maybe a Danke or a Wigets or you know a few words here and there and of course we know Hitler but otherwise we don't know much about these guys. They are saying that you know come over and do business with us because we, we can't give you markets you know we can't give you numbers you know we don't have a population of 3.1 crore people where you can sell things but we can give you a hub you can come and set up base in our country and then you can target Europe from our country. And that's, that's largely the, and of course they outlined uh, in terms of details, they outlined about healthcare, sustainability, uh, digital transformation, a lot of those sectors. What is more interesting for you is they're saying that there are startups in those countries which want to collaborate with startups in Kerala and bring in their heft in terms of technology and in terms of money. And they're saying that, just look at our website, you, if you see an interesting idea, just come. Such, a, such an opportunity was never available for people 10 years back or 20 years back. And we were still, you know, egging our uh, children to do engineering and medicine and nothing else, or become a chartered accountant or a lawyer. But be, anything beyond that was not even thought thinkable. So the opportunities are far and wide there. I think in terms of a weakness, the problem with a lot of opportunity also is a lot of people just want to get in because of, so, so this entire you know, concept of valuation. Um, I have heard people who don't understand the basics of uh, finance say, talking about valuation. And that's not correct. And it's not saying that finance is very complicated. I still maintain that uh, entrepreneur just needs to understand seven standard mathematics to understand uh, uh, finance. There is nothing too complicated about numbers and finance. But you need, to, you need to understand those numbers and you need to understand the meaning of those numbers. And the weakness which I see today is because of the entire, you know, that, that movement and the energy which is attached to entrepreneurship, we are getting people who don't want to spend that kind of time to understand their ideas, their business and articulate those ideas. You know, again I come back to, you know, I go back to college days, you know, we were all taught how to write a business plan. And we say that business plan is where your entire studies comes together. It's like the foundational thing where you bring in all your subjects and then you try to articulate words. It's sort of the grammar and the arithmetic of business. You need to spend that time to understand your business and explain your business to yourself first. 
before you explain it to others. So that I think is a weakness which I'm seeing, which I think I'm sure you know a lot of you. There is far and more resources available. Just go to the internet, Google Business Plan or Google any of these things. Everything is there. You know, to the to the T, everything is there available. So while the opportunity is there, be be sure that you don't fall into that weakness of just looking at a valuation and numbers and not doing your homework. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Rajesh. So I think just one thing that I would uh, pick up to start with is, you know, when you're starting a business, you're in the initial stages. Don't even talk valuations. The moment you talk valuation in front of an investor, he'll get put off. He says, you haven't even started making money or profitability. You don't even know how to make two ends meet. And you're already talking valuations. So I think keep that out of your horizon. Yeah, you know, a startup or fundamentals, it's like running a home. It's like running a small business. Uh, you need to make sure that what you make and what you spend at least match. You know, if they don't match, then there's something what you're doing is absolutely wrong. You need to make sure first that what you earn and what you spend actually matches. Then what you spend should go down and what you earn should go up. And then you start talking about more complex things. So that's point number one. And Vivek, just to share with you and the rest of my panelists, I actually ran an educational foundation in Kerala for two years, a very large education foundation. So I worked with class 10, class 11, class 12 students who, um, who, who, uh, who were very keen on entrepreneurship. And I was absolutely thrilled to see that the number of young, bright students who were keen to look at startups as a career option. Uh, at the school stage itself, in class 11 and class 12, we were already working with them on their own startups. And you know, we would enter them in all the usual, your tie competitions and the usual, the, you know, whatever, whatever students do. And we had amazing results. And we had one or two people who actually came out with stuff which we felt could be taken to the next level. So, so there was, you know, I think the ecosystem in Kerala is fantastic. Um, all credit to what has been provided by way of infrastructure. I think the info park, the maker, village and you know the various other facilities that have been put up across the state of Kerala are you know as good if not better than many you would see around the country and many you would see even outside the country so that's one thing the other thing is intellectual capital is available by the plenty so that intellectual capital is great attraction not just locally but also across the world so I think Rajesh mentioned, you know, the opportunity to collaborate with other countries, to look at hubs in other places. I think that's amazing. It's something you have to do, but once you feel that you've reached that stage of maturity where you can go to the next level, because going to another country and collaborating with others is not always a cheap option or an easy option. Uh, you've got to think very hard about what you do. Uh, that's another piece. The third piece is that I think from, a, from an ecosystem perspective, Indians and especially the Malayali culture says you're entrepreneurs by heart. You've gone out into many different parts of the world and set up enterprising businesses, large businesses, successful businesses. Yeah. Why can't we have X number of unicorns slated for the state. I think that's something that you need to really target next. And I think the the startup ecosystem in the state, um, you know, between Kerala Startup Mission, Thai, and the various other organizations that work on this space, I think are doing an incredible job to try and actually make that happen. They're giving you the opportunity. So the one thing is you need opportunity. Once the opportunity is presented to you on a plate, then the initiative has to come from your side. That 
can I do it, can't I do it? Do I have my fundamentals and my thought processes in the right place? If I do, there's plenty of opportunity. And India today being the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, um, there is very, very healthy respect for Indian talent, Indian startups, Indian technology. Indians are no longer considered to be the back office of the world. There was a time when all you could think of is, okay, I'll do this call center in India, I'll do this back office there, I'll do that. That will continue to happen. But now there's a tremendous amount of innovation happening that can be taken across borders. And I think as a state, Kerala is very well positioned to be able to take a lot of great initiatives in that space. So I think make use of it, make use of what you've got available. Events like this, I mean, honestly speaking, I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised to see an event of this scale being arranged at a beachside location. Yeah, gives it a uniqueness. And that's not something that you see in many different parts of the world. Yeah, it's a logistical nightmare to try and do it here. But it's still been pulled off and you, and you know, the only thing I can tell you is the crowds that you see coming in, the buzz that you see at the venue, I think that is, is, is enough to tell you that things are happening. Initiatives have to be taken by you as individuals, as entrepreneurs. Make use of the ecosystem. I think the ecosystem is giving you that opportunity. Make use of it. Make use of people. There are enough mentors in this entire you know, premises today. You can actually walk up to people and ask them, what should I do with my startup? Am I doing things right or am I doing things wrong? Where do you get that opportunity? It takes months and months and months to connect with people. It takes months to get them to answer your emails or to do a call with you. All that is happening under one roof. Thank and you. I think that's where the positivity is. Money is flowing into the ecosystem. Indians are no longer the traditional only real estate or only traditional investments goal. People are now saying, hey, I'm happy to invest in a startup. You've got to make it convincing enough for them to invest in your idea. Yeah? So, I'll... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ish. I think uh, you really motivated the crowd with that. And over, over to you, Arun. Sure. Uh, so, institutions, you know, both of them talked about that's fundamental to the ecosystem. And I'm glad to see so much is happening out here. And I'm hearing a lot of good things from outside of the state as well about the state. So, two, I would just say for the entrepreneurs and the ecosystem in general, do not compare ecosystems, right? So typically, I come from Chennai. There is some chip on the shoulder always about Bangalore, right? So even to the extent there's one private equity investor I respect a lot in Chennai, talks about Bangalore as the city to the west of us, right? He doesn't even want to name the city. So I'm saying not at all. So I, I a huge respect for Professor Ashok Junjunwala, who has created IIT Research Park. It's a something that can be compared very honestly to Stanford, right? So, it's clearly head and shoulders above any IIT out there and uh, hats off to him. So, there is this company Aether Energy that we all know, incubated right there in IIT Madras. Had they met enough investors, got nothing in Chennai, outside of Chennai too, until he went and met Sachin Bansal in Bangalore. And Sachin Bansal said, don't change a single iota in your business plan. Come over to Bangalore though. So that he did. And Aether Energy went to Bangalore and so did so many other consumer startups. So I actually asked Professor Junjunwala, is this something that we are doing wrong in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, that we are losing so many startups to Bangalore? And his answer blew me off, right? So he said, if that's where the customers are and that's where the early adopter consumers are, please let them go to Bangalore with our blessings. It's all India, right? So that's a fabulous way to think and coming back today, Chennai, thanks to IIT Research Park and thanks to, you know, the SaaS companies out of there, whether it is Freshworks or Zoho 
Each of them have carved an independent path. Freshworks down the venture capital path all the way to IPO. And here is Reza Rainbow living in down south saying, no IPO, no external funding for me. Both are mega unicorns, right? So carve your own path. Don't compare yourself to any other ecosystem. Even in the US, there is only one Silicon Valley. And no other, you know, the ecosystem is a patch on that in terms of just funding. But every other ecosystem, including Texas, Austin and Texas, including now Miami and Florida, are all developing their own flavors. I'm sure Kerala will have its own flavor as well. And I'd love to see what that's going to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. I think uh, we have prop close to about 15 to 20 minutes before we wind up the session. So. I'll, uh, you know, throw the you know, floor open for questions and if there aren't any, we'll continue. Yeah, there's a question from here. Can you please? Uh... Yeah, uh, hi, sir. My name is Raghav. I'm from Chennai. Uh, we are working on a social media app. Um, it's, it's a really saturated market. We have, there's a lot of uh, competitors out there and, and, you know, the, the market is, in terms of the market potential, it's huge, but the competition is l a lot. Um, so we are going to have a like a large maturity curve. Basically, we need a lot of time to mature before we make revenue, and we do need investments for us to hire the right people to work on this. So we are seeking early stage investments. But you mentioned that um, it's really not okay to talk about valuation when you don't even have revenue. We don't have anything to you know base the valuation on right now. But when we talk about like the, what is what do we give to the investors in return for the investments, we have to think about like. What, what is the value proposition for what, you know, what they're giving to us. So how do we evaluate the equity that we uh, give to them and how do we uh, make, a, make a fair deal for us? Rajesh, probably. So uh, one of the models which we have seen for companies which are, it, it's too early for valuation or you know, there are no early adopters, you know, everything is in the planning stages what we call as revenue-based funding, RBF. Revenue-based funding is where an investor comes and says that uh, this is your first tranche of money. So for every, uh, every, inv uh, no, every, let's say, one lakh you make in the market, I will disburse funds in terms of milestones. So there, uh, you, what you normally do is you look at it as a debt right now. And you know you you look at it as a as a debt, and you know let's say as a at a percentage, uh, mutually agreed percentage, and then subsequently when uh, when the revenues come in and when you are ready to do a valuation and estimate how large your company is, then you can probably go and do a you know a valuation and instead of the debt round, you know you actually come in and uh, you know give them equity and things like that. Uh, that's for. Uh, you know, that's what you should do in the you know that's one one of those options that we have but otherwise uh, uh, very frankly try to get smaller angels in in the beginning and uh, you should you know you should very seriously think if you are a startup and you are getting into a mature market and if you because you're saying as you're saying you know, it's like a red ocean where you know you have multiple competitors already and of course you believe in your product and you believe in that particular idea uh, but you should think twice in terms of where you are getting into. Because it's not just the idea. Uh, it's about even, uh, you know, the threat of entry. What if some of those existing players replicate your idea in a much faster clip? Or, you know, they have the heft in terms of money, in terms of, you know, I, you know in terms of running a firm, etc. So it's always risky to get into a... I'm, I'm making a very general statement. I don't know what your product is. But it's very risky to be a startup in a very mature market uh, with zero funds. Uh, and, and I'm presuming that you may have some, let's say, family money, friends and family, etc. But um, you have to rethink in terms of where you're getting into. But yeah, revenue-based funding is one option that we have seen some people use these days. Would you like to add to I'll that? just add on. Sorry. Please, please. No, no. I was requesting one uh, I'll just add on to what... Rajesh also mentioned two, three things. There are a lot of companies like that in the market. Do you have a niche that you've carved out for yourself even in this crowded ocean? Think. Think. 
and how can you play on that? Are you able to create something which you can call as your USP, which others have not done? Secondly, is there any IP you're creating? Yeah? Are you creating IP? These are all things that can be monetized in a certain way. And what Rajesh mentioned to you, you know, revenue-based funding. Another word for it is convertible. It could be convertible debt, it could be anything at all. Where you've said and you've convinced the investor that I have got a great idea and this is how I'm going to execute. Please remember one thing. Your, everybody thinks that if I've got an idea, my startup is done. That's only 10% of what you really need to do. Until your execution plan is not extremely strong, if you're not able to go out there and execute and showcase what you're saying on paper, you don't have a business. You understand? And that's where investors will differentiate you from the crowd. You understand what I'm saying? Money is there, but for the right startups. Simple. Carve a niche. If you have an IP, fantastic. If you don't, you either have to be a very smooth talker to make sure you're able to convince the investors. Sorry. Please. I don't know. Would you like to add to that? Just to say that, you know, everything, see, one, there are no rules. And uh, rule number two, refer rule number one. Right? That's the story <laughs> of entrepreneurship. So it's, it's up to you to get the proxies for revenues, right? So if you have crazy user adoption, that's it, everything. You know, nobody's going to talk about Facebook, WhatsApp, nothing, right? You, if you've got the users behind you, valuations will follow and you will get your right deal. So there is no, I mean, if not, if you get a raw deal in this environment in seed round, swallow it, it'll catch up over a period of time. That's not the issue. The best of the entrepreneurs I've seen can time the cycle very well but that's okay to take that even facebook pre ipo took a down round that's kind of considered a bad word now which means the valuation in the previous round was higher than what you take now facebook i pre ipo round was far lower than its previous round but look where they are now right so don't worry too much on the valuation if you have the users behind you all these rules go out of the window that's my two bit here thank you i think we have a couple of questions more We'll have time only for another two more questions, so please. Uh, so I uh, remember like five years before when you used to pitch for an idea or a VC, uh, some young VC asking you like the no, same question, no? does your toothpaste, toothpaste have salt, like does your uh, startup have AI? <laughs> so how, how much is still uh, no, have a sector focused or how much is the fund of fund uh, may be pushing for a particular bracket or is there still that hype of you know, does your toothpaste have salt or does your startup have AI is still relevant in the investment? Uh, no, how do we you know? Is still that you have to pictureize the, the, the starry jargon which is in the you know, have to be funded or how, how is that it has changed or how is it coming in? I'll just take a stab. So point is you know the old Dronacharya, Arjuna, eye of the sparrow point, right? So why are we bothered about anything other than the eye of the sparrow out there? You focus on your wonderful baby, that's it. The VC world can figure out its stuff around all of that. But if we focus on not the sparrow, but just the eye, you got your point, right? So let's not worry about space tech is hot today, deep tech is hot today, D2C is gone. I mean, Mama Earth IPO happened, you know, last week, right? Everybody wrote it off. It's like this IPO has going to up and happen. In that the I but it's the entrepreneur who pulled it off. Freshworks IPO, I would say the same thing. It's down, but the entrepreneur is far from being out. I'm saying stick to our knitting and I think the world can figure itself out. My two bits, so. Go, Darren. No, you, you can add your two bits to it. Rajesh, Anish, yeah. you have something to No, say. I think... Uh, See, this flavor of the season will continue, especially when your investment thesis is not very clear. And there are lots of funds who, you know, who are very open to looking at a lot of ideas. So 
there is also also that uh, that you know you follow the crowd and it's it's you know if everybody is investing in AI, I'm a fool not to invest in AI sort of thing. So at times, flavor of the season is. But as he said, uh, focus on what your product is, what your idea is about, and then build around those. Don't necessarily worry about the flavor of the season. I'll just add one more thing to uh, what my colleagues have said. Play to your strengths. Please remember, when somebody comes and gives you money, he looks at you and he says, what is this guy good at? You know, he looks at the founder behind it. What does the founder depend on? The founder depends on the ecosystem around him. What does the local ecosystem give you? What are the strengths in the local e ecosystem? Yeah? Are you going to create social media startups or are you going to create startups that would go on, let's say, um, uh, you know, wellness and Ayurveda or would you do manufacturing or you do, would you do prototyping and manufacturing? Because the ecosystem provides you fantastic facilities to be able to do that. Like he said, Chennai has a certain capability. Bangalore has another capability. Kerala will develop its own capability. You have to figure out whether you fit into that ecosystem or not. If you fit into that ecosystem, play to its strengths because you'll be able to do a lot more. Yeah? That's very well said. And something that we typically see is that some a, people, a lot of startup entrepreneurs also get confused. They get very confused. I said, somebody asks you, is there salt? And then you start, okay, chalo, let me go the salt way. Or, you know, th that may not be your area of core competence. That's probably not even your concept, not your idea. That's not what your users want. But you sit in some of these rounds or you sit with some of these, uh, you know, discuss with several of your friends and family. Each one has their own perspective. If you keep adding that to what you plan to do, you would be scattered all over the place. Yeah, let's take one more question. Uh, myself, Shanmaka Bhuvaneshwar. I run a firm named Finfresh. Uh, we are building a uh, behavioral personal finance management platform. So, so I have two questions. One is like, uh, as you said, like, what is the fundamentals that in point of venture capitalists or in, uh, uh, as an investors? And the next one is like, uh, uh, let me take in my case, like we have very few early adapters. We just had a beta launch and we have very few early adapters. But the potential to grow is very huge. And how do we arrive at a valuation? Whether we have to arrive at the users with us or the potential it has. So uh, I'll answer the first question. The second question first, in fact. Forget about valuation right now. You know? So it's a, it's a distant, you don't need to worry about valuation right now. Uh, in terms of how should you prepare yourself? So uh, if, you, if you look at what investors look at and I have I've sit, sat in sessions where uh, I've seen different kinds of investors, the VCs, the angels, the private equity investors. Uh, five things, broadly if I can sum up what I've seen. One is uh, technical excellence. You know, how good is your product or how good is your service? Technical excellence. The second is your strategic focus. You have an idea on what that product is, where is it where is it going to earn revenue from? Who's going to buy? Uh, what kind of market? Who are the competitors now? So the strategic uh, part of it. The third is you need to have a good team or an outstanding team as what? Well. Even if you, it's not an outstanding team, at least a team which understands the product and is able to deliver the required results. The fourth is reasonable finances. And I'm not saying you need chartered accountants in the team. But people who understand numbers and he, people who understand where are those numbers coming from. So that's the fourth one. And the fifth one is some urgency in what you're doing. So if you're sitting back with an idea and not implementing anything, and we want to see that sense of urgency in a presentation as well, in how you present. So five things, your technical excellence, your strategic focus, uh, how good your team is or outstanding team, reasonable finances, and uh, the last one was a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency in you know, how you're presenting it and how you're talking about your product or service. 
I think now you know, we have uh, in the Kerala Angel Network pitch happening probably two, three times a month. Rajesh sits through all the sessions. Now you know what you need to do if you need to impress him. So now, <laughs> the VCs have, you know, kind of evolved and come up with the three T's, you know, for your this thing. So, team, TAM and traction. Right? So, it's kind of summarized. So, team, obvious. Uh, so, when you can valuation, there are people who on paper, what have you done in the past? That's a proxy, right? So, what can you do? TAM, total addressable market. You Again, your point on valuation. Everybody can tell you, forget valuation, but you have to go to Kerala Angels and ask for valuation. So, I'll give you the three T's, right? So, the third T is traction. So, you said you have some early consumers. How can you double click? And this environment where things are difficult to get, you know, funding, it, nothing is stopping your users, behavioral economics, so therefore, get more traction. That will impress him that much more, right? So, team, time and traction. You got your valuation. I just add, add one point to that. In this business, remember, never to lose track of your customer acquisition cost. Something that can kill you is if your cost of acquiring your customer becomes extremely high. You're finished. So, you may have the grandest of ideas and you may be acquiring customers, but if you're acquiring them at a very high cost, then you don't have a business. Yeah? Right. I think that's a great note with which we have to close. Uh, as you can see, the sessions are going on time and uh, we would also like to maintain that discipline. We've started at three, so we'll probably wind up within the next one minute. Before that, uh, on behalf of all of us here, panelists, we would like to thank all of you for being here, for being such wonderful audience. And uh, we, have a, we have a good uh, uh, group. There are investors here, there are entrepreneurs here, there are senior professionals, including the managing partner of Verma and Verma Pankit, sir. Let me acknowledge your presence here. and. So it's great to have all of you here and let me also thank Startup Mission for, you know, conceiving this and, you know, putting up such a grand show for inviting all of us here. As they said, 10,000 people over three days, uh, that's the kind of footfall here and uh, phenomenal event, Huddle Global, I'm sure it'll go down in history as one of the, one of the finest events that we've seen and uh, congratulations to all of you and team and uh, on behalf of Startup Mission, let me thank all our panelists here, Rajesh, Ish and Arun for uh, taking the time out, being with us and uh, expressing your views so eloquently over the last one hour. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your valuable time and valuable presentation here. So as a token of gratitude from KSUM side, I would introduce, I would like to give this uh, gift to each panelist. I would like to uh, invite our moderator to hand over the presentation. <laughs>